The first person shooter genre is one of the most popular genres on the PC and console of today. Some developers choose to release shovelware that pretty much copies another title, while other developers choose to innovate and bring a fresh breath of life into the genre. Well, it's clear from the very beginning that the game we're reviewing today falls into the latter category, and that's an awesome thing. My name is Tony from the Classic Leak Gaming and Electronic Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host, Gooch, and today we are reviewing together Deus Ex Human Revolution, developed by Eidos Montreal and published by Square Enix. Now, Deus Ex Human Revolution is a story that plays on, a human, it plays on human emotions, and it does so brilliantly. Now, it's placed in the setting of the future. There's human augmentation happening and a war raging that hits home to all of humanity. The conflict is between the purists that believe humans should not be tampered with and the augs or augmenters who believe that humans should be modified and made better. You play as Adam Jensen, and I don't want to ruin any of the story, but basically at the beginning of the game, you're in an accident, and you are the chief of security for a large corporation who deals with augmentation, so they decide to augment you so you can live. You are heavenly augmented, and you go out and begin to explore a story to dig deep and see what happens, and you begin to uncover this massive conspiracy. All I'm going to say without ruining any spoilers is that this story is a very strong asset to the Deus Ex game. Because it's so closely tied to the human condition, it pulls you right in and you feel emotionally attached. At its heart, Deus Ex Human Revolution mixes the best of a lot of genres. Open world, action RPG, and first person shooter, just to name a few. The way that developer Eidos decided to enter people into the game, it's absolutely brilliant. The way it starts out at first, it's very linear, feeling more like a typical first-person shooter within the first 30 minutes. Each new section for the first couple of hours of the game eases you in with tutorials all very well designed. Little videos that teach you how to do something in the game. They show you a video of your character doing it in a specific section of the game that you are in. Exit the video and you practice immediately. The reason I like this format is because Human Revolution is a very challenging game, and they do not try to teach you everything immediately, but ease you into the game. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. The first couple of hours into the game, I had completed the tutorial and a good part of the beginning story, and I felt like I had a really good grasp on how to play the game. Well, Gooch, as we mentioned before, Human Revolution combines open-world gaming, action RPG, and first-person shooter genres. Now, here's what we mean. It's not open-world in the sense of like a Grand Theft Auto-type game, but in the sense that there might be ten different ways to complete the same thing. For example, if your character Jensen has high security skills, he can break right into a room that's a significant part of the story. If his security skills are low and you choose to focus maybe on stealth, your character might be able to find a vent outside of the building to enter into the same room, since your skills aren't high enough just to break into it. So that's really amazing. The game feels large and expansive because you can tailor it to your own experience. It's a first-person shooter in every sense of the word. I mean, the controls, the graphics, the way that you play with the first-person shooter genre in this game is just really amazing. Um, it feels like you're playing Call of Duty Black Ops or Halo Reach. I mean, it, it, they, they do a really good job nailing the first-person part, and everything that you do in the game is first-person, from aiming to controls. Now, the cover system is the only thing in the game that can be slightly confusing and slightly awesome at the same time. I love what they did with the cover system, but at the same time, it's a bit hindering. It can get a little confusing when the action gets high. But once again, that's a very small complaint in a very great game. Now, it is also an RPG, as we mentioned. And so your character becomes who you want him to be. Now, a lot of titles promise this, but Human Revolution actually delivers. It's an RPG in multiple forms. First of all, the game is composed of main quest and side quest, which are organized very well. Now, obviously, the main quests are ones that you want to complete for the story mode, um, but the side quests are ones that you pick up from encountering different characters along the game. But believe me, you will be so sucked into the story of this game, you're going to want to complete every side quest of the game. Secondly, this game is an RPG because of augmentations, which are really at the heart of the experience. Gooch, tell us about augmentations. With the augmentations, you really can design the experience of this game uh, in the way that you want it to be because of the augmentation system. As you play the game, you earn experience for completing missions, side quests, discovering secrets, and so much more. 
experience turns into you unlocking Praxis points, which are the currency of the game uh, in terms of building your character. Praxis points are how you unlock and upgrade augmentations to your character, and there are two types of augmentations, active and passive. Active ones you will use at specific times, while passive augmentations are always on. Augmentations are broken up into several categories that focus on different areas, such as stealth, social, combat, hacking, and so many more. Uh, this really allows you to customize the experience in the way that you want. If you want a powerful character, you can do it. If you want a hacker, go for it. If you want a stealth experience, you can do that. There are so many augmentations and upgrades. Uh, practice points become very precious. So you will want to decide on the type of character you want and begin upgrading those specific augments. Now, there are some other gameplay elements as well, and even ones that we won't mention, because the game is very deep and very big. First of all, I do want to say that the menu is very well organized. It's broken up into sections like inventory, quests, maps, augments, and more. Now, the inventory will remind you of the Resident Evil games of old with a grid-based system, and you can see how many things you can move around to fit in and out. The game also provides a very interactive experience. You can search through ca trash cans, move dumpsters, flush toilets, turn on seeks, and so on. So it's really awesome in that way. It's also very cinematic. It's amazing how this game goes in and out of cinematic motions and is just really immersive and draws you in. And of course, Gooch, I cannot do a review without mentioning the melee kills. Me, Gooch, and DB both messed around with this for a long time and it is just so awesome. If you approach an enemy in stealth mode from behind, you have a choice of either killing them or stunning them. Either way, it's simply badass, because the game breaks into an animation that's just absolutely brutal. Kind of reminds you of a Mortal Kombat fatality. There are several of these, at least seven or eight, if not more. My favorite being when um, Adam breaks the guy down at his knees and stands behind him, extends blades from his elbows and drives them deep into the shoulder of his enemies. Absolutely brutal, absolutely amazing, and these will not get old. And I think a lot of that is because the game looks so good. It is stunning from a graphical perspective. Uh, the, the entire game looks very futuristic, and you can tell that this world is in complete conflict. Uh, being square, the attention to detail is just amazing. We even saw a poster for Final Fantasy 20-something. <laughs> so the satire that we love from Square is definitely there as well. I kind of do wish at times that the color template was a little different because some of the color schemes get old after a while and they start to look the same. But honestly, in a game this vast, that's a really small complaint. I do want to touch a bit more on the controls before we're done. The controls are done very well in this game. The shooter portion, like I said, rivals some of the best first-person shooters on the market. Whether you're zooming in for a headshot or blasting from cover, it's just pretty amazing. The menus are e easy to navigate and understand from a control perspective, and the game is e also makes it easy to interact with the environment, whether you're picking up a box, throwing a box, moving a dumpster, uh, whatever it may be. Like I said, the cover system is a little... It's a little tricky at times. It's very awesome and it's very fun to experiment with, but when the game gets pretty action heavy, the cover experience might hinder just a little bit. But overall, the controls are very good and very well done. So I guess wrapping up here, in conclusion, Eidos Montreal and Square Enix deliver a fantastic experience to kick off the fall game season with Deus Ex Human Revolution. While this game is not perfect and it has some minor complaints, it is definitely a fresh wind of experience for the gamer. It's hard to cover all the aspects in this game in, in this short review, but if you pick one thing up from this video, it's that Human Revolution is an experience that should not be missed. You must, if you're a fan of games, pick this one up today. Thank you so much for watching our dual review of Deus Ex Human Revolution. Make sure you check out our podcast at classicleet.com and like us on facebook.com backslash classicleet.